Okay, pay attention. Jabba has just captured Princess Leia. E.T. phoned home. Alex is dancing her heart out. And whilst Tom Cruise was out joyriding in his dad's Porsche, a teenager was being asked in his room, Shall we play a game? Meanwhile, at the exact same time over in China, this pretty young girl was being executed for having too many boyfriends. She hadn't been cheating or sleeping around, but because she had too many boyfriends one after the other, she was charged with female hooliganism, loaded onto a truck, taken out into a field, and shot by the Chinese government with an AK-47. We will get into the story of Di Man Xia, the young lady who you saw in the intro, but this video isn't a history lesson. It's a wake-up call for anyone who thinks that China for some reason has drastically changed its attitude towards women. But what about Di Man Xia? The early 80s in China was a time of massive change. Mad Mao was finally dead, and although China was slowly opening up, a lot of the old draconian laws were still in place. Having any sexual activity other than heterosexual intercourse within a monogamous marriage was deemed immoral and possibly criminal. Stifled by a repressive regime, rebellious youth would participate in lights out or hooligan dance parties, which included dancing, looking at pornography, which of course was strictly banned, and as you can guess, many taboos were broken. So a message popped up from a very good friend of mine whom I trust. Looked legitimate, had a link, I clicked the link, big mistake. His computer had been hacked and the malware was spamming everybody in his contact list. Luckily for me, I was using Guardio, which acted as my first line of defense. You know, as embarrassing as it is for somebody like me, a YouTuber with an IT background to fall for such a basic trick, we all make mistakes. And this is what these hackers are depending on. Luckily, we've got something like Guardio because we access pretty much all of the internet through a web browser these days. Think about it, you access your Gmail, you're watching YouTube, your social media, your passwords and credit card details, all stored in your browser. Guardio is a plugin for your browser that shields you from scam sites, phishing attempts, pop-ups, and will notify you about information leaks connected to you in real time. Guardio is super easy to use and install. Once installed, it will run a quick security check to detect any existing threats. This can be a real eye-opener. It certainly was for me, as it'll show you what existing information of yours is already at risk or compromised. After the initial scan, you'll have a seven day free trial in which to remove these threats and enable real-time protection and get to know the software. Guardio's identity protection is cross-platform, giving you real-time alerts on your mobile so that you can act immediately should a data leak occur. Go to guard.io forward slash serpentza. It only takes 30 seconds to install and one Guardio account covers five family members, even your aunt who thinks she's won an iPhone 14. Do you see how many headaches this can make you avoid? Join over 1 million people who have already installed Guardio today. Go to guard.io forward slash serpents today and you'll get 20% off their already affordable monthly subscription. Link is in the description. And now back to the show. To combat and regulate sexuality, the Chinese government implemented a broad and sweeping criminal penalty, the offense of hooliganism or Liu Mengzui. This, like many Chinese laws, was intentionally very vague and open-ended and could result in arbitrary arrests and punishments, including execution, based solely on how the local government enforcers were feeling that day. Countless people were arrested and punished for hooliganism during the period this law was heavily enforced. That's the period between 1979 and 1996. Yes, the same year as people were dancing the Macarena and playing Tomb Raider, Chinese people were still being arrested and punished for hooliganism. It's really impossible to know just how many people were arrested, jailed, punished, or executed under this arbitrary law. But here are some quick examples for you. Two unmarried couples in Hunan who were reportedly sneaking out of their village into the fields at night for some illicit alone time were arrested and prosecuted as a hooligan gang. A bicycle repairman who seduced and had relations with seven women was sentenced and executed by firing squad. But how did an ordinary girl like Di Man Xia end up being arrested and shot in the head? 
Well, like all rebellious girls of her generation, the rapid changes and opening up of China in the early 80s was a chance for her to express herself. Dressing up in fashionable clothes, wearing makeup, that sort of thing. These things were still considered taboo by the vast majority of traditional and conservative-minded people in Chinese society. She believed that women should be free. Ever since she was a young girl, she yearned for life in the West. In her opinion, what women lacked the most in China was the freedom to choose their own future. Forced into arranged marriages and stifled by a society that forbid casual relationships and sexual freedom. So, to cut a long story short, she embraced the ideas of freedom and dated multiple men. Not at the same time, mind, but she had multiple relationships, one after the other. At least until someone anonymously ratted her out to the authorities. You'll find that in communist societies, cowardly narking is kind of just par for the course. And I'm guessing it was a jealous boyfriend or somebody who was rejected by her. Whatever the case, she was ratted out and she was arrested, deemed a female hooligan and charged with hooligan promiscuity for having had 18 different relationships. Branded for disrupting society and the stability of the People's Republic of China, she was summarily executed by a bullet to the head. So yeah, dating 18 guys, you get murdered for that. Just before her execution, she said, It's my body. Sexual freedom is the right of each of us. You may think that the freedom I chose has crossed the line, but people in the future will not be as conservative as you are now. And of course she was right. So, China wrote out the hooligan law in 1997, right? No, actually they did not. It was simply given another name, and that name is picking quarrels and provoking trouble. This law is widely used today in modern China. According to Wikipedia, the crime is defined as undermining public order by creating a disturbance in a public place. It is a type of criminal disorderly conduct, and as this is an ill-defined crime, it has frequently been used as an excuse to arrest human rights activists, civil rights activists, and lawyers in China, and hold them in detention pending more serious charges such as inciting subversion of state power, etc. In fact, it was used in 2015 to detain and disappear feminists, especially women involved in the Me Too movement. You see, they were busy organizing a protest, and the Chinese government went in and arrested all of them before they could actually go out and do their protests. And they used this arbitrary law of picking quarrels and causing trouble as the reason. Uh, human rights activists, uh, feminist activists, detained on the eve of International Women's Day and held without charge for nearly a month. Well, they threatened to charge them with uh, picking quarrels. Now, that is a, a system in the law often used to, to try and crush dissent here in China. And we have seen in the last several years a tightening of the screws on civil society. This law is used equally to arbitrarily arrest both men and women. Anyone who the government deems undesirable. It's such a sweeping law that the Chinese government can arrest absolutely anyone without having any reason whatsoever. I mean, it's really scary stuff. Any one of you who has some sort of romantic idea about China being a bastion of women's rights or that whole women hold up half the sky malarkey needs a wake up call. Time and time again, the mask slips and we've seen exactly how women are treated in China. Look at the whole Peng Shui debacle. And read this article about prominent women who have been disappeared in 2023. Link is in the description. To be a woman or a child in China is to suffer no protection from society or the law. Before we close out this video, I would like to invite you all to join me on Friday for my live show. If you want to know exactly what's happening in China right now, it's the best place to be. Myself and good friend Seamilk discuss everything from hilarious propaganda to serious soft power. Come and join us. You'll love it, I guarantee. I do have some final thoughts about all of this. I've seen with my own eyes just how bad things can get in China with things like domestic abuse. Um, trust me, there are no protections for women. It's always seen as a domestic matter. I've seen husbands beat their wives on the streets. 
I've had to intervene myself in domestic abuse cases, public domestic abuse cases. Um, it's just awful to see with your own eyes. And everyone seems fine and safe in China until they're not. China still has a long way to go. The changes to China have been too fast and too rapid. Traditions and society have yet had a chance to catch up. And so you may see the propaganda coming out of China of all the glistening buildings and all the, the fancy so-called technology. And um, you may think it's a fantastic progressive place, but it really isn't. There's still parts of Chinese society, Chinese culture and Chinese law that are quite frankly medieval and need to be reformed and changed for the sake of freedom, for the sake of safety of women and children. I hope you've learned something, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Until then, you know the drill. As always, stay awesome. Let's take a look at this. Again, I'll get us out of here so you can see what's going on here. Now, uh, what you're looking at here is a field full of stones stuck onto rebar. Yeah. It's so a lot, too. It is. It's thousands and thousands. I mean, imagine the amount of time it took wow. to do this. Wow. Why not just plant real crops, by the way? <laughs> you could, the amount of time it took to do you could grow real-ass yeah. crops. Because if you haven't guessed it by now, these are supposed to simulate crops, like yeah. cotton or something, right? Because sure. look... This guy in the video, he's like, what is going on here? He stopped. He's like, look at this. He's got his car there. He gets out. He says, what is this? Right? Look at this. And you can see, he's like, oh, like all these stones on top of rebar here. And then he even asks in the video, it's like, what, what's, the, what's going on here? Like, what are these for?